um, you wake up and you say, I really would like to work in insurance. And a lot of people consider it to be boring, administrative, and maybe it doesn't pay that well. I've been very lucky because I found a niche which gives me a lot of satisfaction, which means I get to go out a lot, meet a lot of interesting people, and gives me a lot of access to insider knowledge. I get my own watermark script sometimes, I also get access to the call sheets, so I'm very much informed as to what's happening minute by minute on most productions. And also, even if I don't get to actually physically work on that movie in front or behind camera, as in being on set, I know I have contributed in some way to it. So when I'm watching this movie, I know, okay, right, that's the scene we discussed, that's the risk plan we did, that's the insurance we put in force, and that's the result, you know. So yes, it gives you satisfaction as well. Tours but showing off Malta through the eyes of a lens, as opposed to focused on culture, history, and religion, as maybe most other tours were doing. And um, I said, fine, this would not be a scripted tour, this would be me, sharing my experiences that I had accumulated over the previous 20 years. And um, I originally created a movie tour, which I wanted to give a lot of value to the guests. So I thought I'll make it longer, better. And uh, it was about 14 hours long and had over 20,000 steps. Foolish me, I thought that the typical guest would have been a teenager, you know, and my first tour, I had three old ladies that the average age was around 83 years old, one with a cane. And uh, I said, only 40 minutes through the tour, as we're doing just the first bit of Valletta, you know, which is like San Francisco with all the steps and all. I said, this is not going to work. And immediately on my first day, I started making amends. And then I was approached by an agent abroad and they said, listen, we have demand for Game of Thrones maybe you could create an alternative product specifically for Game of Thrones. And I did, and they liked it. And together we started working to push this. And today it's mostly Game of Thrones. So uh, the vast majority of tours we do focus on Game of Thrones. We do group tours on weekends, we do private tours on some weekdays. And we still offer movie tours, but on a bespoke basis. So it has to be on demand. A group requires specific uh, information about and sites relating to other productions, not specifically Game of Thrones, and we oblige. We also do tours in Gozo. We've also introduced this concept of bike tours. So uh, if you are here on a budget and maybe you've rented a moped and you don't want to stay paying for having a cab or a, a minivan, you could be two couples on a moped and I will be myself with a guide on a bike and we can do it on two wheels as opposed to four. Something which is a novelty, I've invested money in it, so you know, I bought all the gear and all, including uh, intercoms. Um, yeah, again, we're trying to innovate, trying to be different, trying to listen to what people want and give them what they want as opposed to what we want, you know. So that has been, I guess, uh, the basis of our success over these five years. It has crossed my mind, actually, on a few occasions, what if I had to focus all my energy on doing tours? I would have to innovate more. I would have more time to focus and what I would do is I would be more creative. So I would create things which go beyond what I'm doing. I would do more of what I'm doing but then create alternative tours. So I'm not going to tell you what I would do because I might be giving others my ideas. So at the moment I'm going to keep them close at heart but I already have ideas which I believe might work if I had the time to do them. And definitely what I would do if this becomes my full-time thing is make them more innovative, make them more attractive, adding more and varying amongst others the dates. At the moment, the group tours are done only on Saturdays and I lose a lot of guests because a lot of people travel from Saturday to Saturday. So definitely then I would be doing uh, weekday group tours as well. And I would create different versions, maybe with different durations and different pricing so that I can reach a wider market. But uh, again, that is only if I decide to focus all my energy on doing tours and I would diversify so that I myself won't sound stale. Because if you do the same tour three or four times a week, as good as you are, you can eventually fall into a stereotype system and you're repeating yourself. So, to so when I started initially, I wanted to reach out 
to the audience, to the potential audience. And um, I started putting out a lot of adverts, flyers and hotels and so on. But it created a lot of administration. You have to stay going around, you're planning the flyers, you put a batch of flyers there, you pass there two days later and you find they're gone. And it's not because guests took them, someone just chucked them away for you. And uh, it wasn't quite what I wanted. So uh, what I did then, on advice by the people who are actually coming, they said, listen, why don't you set up um, like uh, a representation on TripAdvisor that the people would get to know you? And to be honest with you, I was hesitant at first because I didn't quite know being a new product what the reaction of the people would be. But I took the plunge and I uh, put our name out there on TripAdvisor and we started getting reviews. Today, five years later, it's the only marketing we have, as in no marketing. People Google uh, what to do in Malta, they Google uh, filming, and Malta Film Tools comes up. They go onto TripAdvisor, and when they do that, they find, thanks to our guests, positive reviews, and as a result, they book through either the TripAdvisor platform, which uh, is uh, obviously has a brand to it, so people tend to believe a lot in it, and we've also created our own website, and people can reach us through that. Other forms of marketing are directly through hotels and random people who maybe are interested in screen tourism and they would promote the products and then they would ask us if we would take those guests on. So we receive from various sources, but uh, we don't have anything out there. So you will not find any posters or billboards or adverts relating to Malta Film Tours. It's basically by uh, Googling what you want to do in Malta. So, as a typical startup, you would expect. As a typical startup, you would expect that initially your costs for setup will outweigh the income. So those will include, of course, getting the license, getting regulated, having your insurance in place, having uh, good equipment such as laptops, whatever is needed, printers. You will need to have a very good website. Okay, in this case, if you need to reach out, you will need to invest in marketing to get the ball rolling, so that people get to know you. So flyers, posters. Uh, search engine optimization, adverts on the internet, whatever your mode, you have to be there. And then you will have your running costs. So that means on every tour, you will need the materials that you might be taking with you or giving out to the people. You will have the transportation, you will have the driver, you will have the guide, you will have the fuel costs, and you will have any tips which you choose to give to your uh, servicemen, whether they're the guides and drivers. And of course, on longer tours, you may need to stop for lunch, and it is expected that you'd also pay for the lunch of your crew, so you have to factor that in as well. So there are quite a few costs. You have to rem remember that part of the charge is tax that goes to the taxman, and at the end of the year, you have to submit your uh, revenue uh, taxation. People tend to forget about that. That also goes, off, goes out, out of your profits. So yeah, it could be profitable, but you need to weigh in a number of expenses as well. Word of advice for anyone wanting to get into this industry is uh, first and foremost, don't give up. Okay, it's not going to be easy, and uh, you will seek help and you won't find it. And you will believe others are there to help you, and they will they will, will not actually. However, having said that, you need to believe in yourself, and if you do that, basically you should do well. But most importantly, is keep yourself updated. So research and always make sure that you're giving a factual and good product and make it interesting. Don't make it all about dates and stuff. People are not interested in that. Keep it flowing, keep it animated, uh, use good projection, good diction, and uh, then people will review you. And then automatically, once you get a, good, a few good reviews, then you have the ball set in motion and you should expect a few good years.